and we want you to have faith in God. you this morning, Father. Father God, we thank you for your son and the shed of the blood that he died for us on the cross today, God. God, we love you today, God. Thank you and bless you for my pastor and the first lady today, Father God. Bless each and every one that is in the sound of my voice. Bless those that are on Facebook today, God. Oh, God, go down each and every pew today, God. Touch them, God. You know what they need today, God. We ask that you touch them in a very, very special way. Oh, God, we love you. We thank you. And thank you for your son, Jesus. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Come on, lift him up now. Come on, let's lift him up. Come on, lift him up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you've started us, God. You've helped us today, God. You've started us on our way, God. Without you, God, we are nothing. We lift you up. We magnify you. You are so good today, God. We love you. We love you. We need you. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. Come on and bless them in this place. Hallelujah. Come on and lift your hands. Lift your hands in the sanctuary. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, God. We magnify your name in this place, Lord. There's nobody like you. Nobody like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Well, let's go to our neighbor. Let's sing our song to our neighbor. Y'all love, y'all love one, one another this morning. Let's sing this is my church. Is that all right? Come on, y'all. Put your hands together. This is my church. We stand as one. We march by faith, united by love. God opened my heart to receive the word. And let me apply that which I am. stand on our feet and give the Lord some praise this morning. Is that all right? Hallelujah. It's all right to move in your seat. Come on, clap your hands. We come to lift our hands to you, Lord. Hallelujah. We come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Everybody in the room we come to lift our hands and give Him glory. We come to lift our hands and give Him praise. One more time, say. We come to lift our hands and give Him glory. We come to lift our hands and give Him praise. We come to lift our hands and give Him glory. We come to lift our hands and give Him praise. Give Him glory. Yeah. 
to clap our hands and give him praise. Everybody in the room say, We come to clap our hands and stand up to the. We come to clap our hands and give him praise. We come to clap our hands and stand up to the. We come to clap our hands and give him praise. We come to clap our hands and stand up to the. We come to clap our hands and give him praise. We come to do our best. We come. 
Hallelujah. I guess y'all can't hear me. Hallelujah. Say, I've come to clap my hands. I've come through my dance. I've come to lift him up. Hallelujah. How many know the Lord is a way maker? Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Let's just reverence the Lord this morning. Father, we, we acknowledge you in this place, Lord. There's nobody else important than you. Hallelujah. His word says that where two or three are gathered in the midst, there I am. Y'all remember that? When Moses said in the word, he said, who shall I say sent me? God said, I am is sending you. So turn to your neighbor and say, I am is here. I am is here. Hallelujah. We acknowledge you, Lord. We reverence you and we reverence your presence. Just close your eyes this morning. I want you to just concentrate on the Lord right now. He's bigger than that situation you're facing. He's bigger than that problem back at the house. That is who he is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are here, moving in the midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship. Y'all help me say that. We make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, my God, that is who you are. Come on, sing it one more time. Hallelujah. We make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. Yeah. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. That is who you are. You're the way maker. You're the promise keeper. You're the healer. You're the deliverer. You're the sustainer. You're the mind regulator. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, I'm thinking about in my Bible, as always, when Abraham had a child with this concubine, because his wife said, go ahead. He was trying to fix the situation, or should I say, Sarah was trying to fix the situation. And so he had a child with this woman. <laughs> and after she had this child, there was a couple of times she ran off. She ran off once and then the second, the other time she ran off, God had to meet her the first time. And his revelation to her was, I see you. Because some of us think that God doesn't see us. But I've come to tell you today that he sees and he knows. And the other day the Lord was telling me, <laughs> I'm with you. Because sometimes people feel alone. Oh, Sha. Inamaka. You can have a house full of people, but you still feel alone. And God says, I'm there. I'm with you. I got your back. I'm your sustainer. I'm your strength. I'm your way maker. Y'all haven't felt like that before? Oh, I know you have. If you're in this flesh, you've been there. But let's sing that part one more time, that you're a way maker. Come on, I want you to just sing it to your heart. And tell him, you're a way maker. Say way maker. Way maker, miracle work. Promise keeper. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God. My God. That is who you are. Tell them that is. That is who you are. That is who you are. Come on, tell him. That's who he is. You have to tell yourself that's who he is. Come on, help me, y'all. Sing it. That is who you are. That is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
You're a way make a way make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my God that is God, we love you. We lift you up. We praise you. Oh, God, we thank you for another day. Lord, we magnify you on this morning, make you bigger than any problem, bigger than anything we're facing, oh, God. Touch our minds right now, oh, God. Help us to receive in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, fill the room. Touch each and every household that's represented here right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, don't let us leave the same way we came, but let us leave changed and different on the inside. Change our hearts and change our mind and make us new and make us different. Oh God, those things that we said and done that you wouldn't have us to say or do, forgive us right now, oh God, and wash us clean. We thank you for doing it. And we claim it as done in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, give Jesus a hand clap. Only those that love him, if you love him and he's been good to you, give him a hand clap. Thank you. Give him that hand praise. You may be seated. We love the Lord on today. If you're listening to us by Facebook, we want to tell you thank you for tuning in. It's, somebody said I saw somebody the other day and they said it's good to see you and I told them I said it's good to be seen because I could be dead sleeping in my grave but God said not so I could have been in a hospital somewhere laid out but God said not so I could have been anywhere on today could have been in the bar strung out on drugs somewhere but God said not so my mind could be confused and I could be in the street homeless somewhere but God said not so I've been there before and I don't have to go there again because God said not so I thank the Lord I'm glad I'm glad to be saved how many glad to be saved 
glad to be saved. Raise your hand. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm saved. And I know I am. Look at somebody and tell them, say, I'm saved. And I know I am. Oh, yes, I am. Now, the devil, brother sincere, come to you and say, now, you know you ain't saved. You did such and such and such yesterday. And that was just yesterday. The accuser is coming, Elder Eddie, to say you not saved because you know you didn't treat you know you didn't treat Delisha right. She asked you to wash the dishes and you didn't wash them and you was just being mean and hateful. Now how how you gonna be saved and do that? You know you cussed him out yesterday, Elder Delisha, and you not saved, but the devil is a liar and an accuser. Jesus died on the cross for me, saved me and changed me, made me different. Now, I, I might not be what I should be, but I'm not what I used to be. So you should have seen me last week. I was worse than I am today. I am a little bit better today, and it's good to be saved. I like that song. I think I'm going to sing a little bit of that. I was going to do something else, but... I feel like I want to, I'm saved by his power divine, saved to new life sublime, life now sweet and my joy is complete for saved, saved, saved by his power divine. I'm saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet. Joy is complete. For oh, I'm saved. Saved. I found a friend who is all to me. And his love is ever true, true. I love to tell how he lived. Y'all gotta learn this. And what his grace can do for you. I'm saved. I'm saved by his power divine, saved to life sublime, light now is sweet, my joy is completely for oh, I'm saved, saved for time, I'm saved by his power divine, I'm saved, saved. To new life, so I'm like now, like now is sweet. Like now, like now is sweet. Oh, like now, like now is sweet, and my joy is complete. For I'm saved, saved. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm saved, oh yes I am, yeah, yeah, I'm saved, oh yes I am, I'm saved, he didn't have to do it, but he did it anyhow, I'm saved, I was a wretch undone, I'm saved, I'm saved, yes I am, yes I am, I am saved. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete for I'm saved, saved. Oh, oh, oh. I'm saved, oh yes I am. Ah. Yes, 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 oh, that was good. Yes, I am. See, sometimes you, you have to go back in your little memory. 
and remember what God has done for you. My mama used to say, when I think of what Jesus has done for me, my soul cry out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, say, it's going to be all right. No, they didn't believe you because you, you ain't for real. You ain't real. You ain't real. You, you ain't real. Tell them, say, it's going to be all right. Say, whatever it is, it's going to be all right. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it no more. Let it go. Let it go. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. God's going to take care of it. Don't worry about it. Somebody worried today. Somebody worried. You came in here worried today. You came in here worried today. But God said, don't worry about it. You came in worried about your health. And you came in worried about your children. And you came in worried about your job. But it's going to be all right. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Somebody caught that. Somebody came in worried about their husband, but it's going to be all right. Worry about your wife. It's going to be all right. Worry about your money. It's going to be all right. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You come thinking about that car, no, don't worry about it. It's going to be all right. Worry about your house, no, going to be all right. God said, didn't I take care of you before? I'm going to take care of you this time. Don't worry about it. Hallelujah. Worry about what's going to happen during the school year. Don't worry about it. going to be all right. God said, I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to take you through. I'm going to take you over. I'm going to take you around. Whatever I got to do, God said, I'm working on your behalf this morning. I'm working on your behalf. Somebody ain't even got gas money, but God said, I'm working on your behalf. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for another day. If you're listening, we hope we say something today that we encourage you. If you would just give us about 20 minutes of your time, um, we can get this done. Romans, the 14th chapter. Romans, the 14th chapter. And we're going to, we, we may use that. To make that Romans, the fourth chapter. Romans, the fourth chapter. And I think I want the 17th verse to be, it might be, it might be our text. We'll see. We'll see what the Lord has to say. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. See, I will go on, but you ain't ready yet. But God will do what he said he will do. Gonna stand by his word. Hey, it will come true. God will do what he said he will do. He's not a man that he should lie. He will come through. No. I feel a singing anointing. Fawn against me, shall. No, I didn't practice this. It won't work. No weapon. No weapon. Fawn. Shall. It won't work. God will do. God will do. What he said. He's gonna do. He's not a man that he should lie. He 
he will come through. God will do just what he said he'll do. He will stand by his word. He will come through. No weapon falling against me shall prosper. He will win. No weapon form shall in one word. Hallelujah. Come on, clap those hands. If you believe it won't work. I want to say to you on this morning, what has God told you to believe him for? What has God told you to believe him for? What has God told you to believe him for? What is it? What is it? What is it that God has said? Believe me. Trust me. I'm able to do it. What, what you're asking, what you're asking, uh, what I told you I would do, what I promised you. What did I say that I would come through for you on? What is it this morning? Whatever I promised you, God says, I'm able to do it. Romans 4 and 17, I'm going to use that as our, um, as our main scripture on today. But if we read Romans, a lot of times Romans is, uh, it can be a complex, a complex uh, book. For people to read, and sometimes they say, "Well, I don't want to read that because you know it's got a lot of stuff in it, and I don't quite understand what they're saying." Even when I go to my Message Bible, and if you, many of you know that I'm not a proponent of Message Bibles, or there's a couple Bibles, and I, I hope uh, they don't flag me or nothing. But there's a couple Bibles out there that I don't like them. I don't like them because they don't give you, they don't have the nuances of the scriptures. The new, they miss the nuances. King James Version is good a lot of times. People don't understand the King's English. And so they pass it by and say, well, okay, I'm gonna read the Message Bible. The Message Bible and the Passion Bible, I'm gonna read out of the Passion Bible today even, even though you know, I have you know, issues with the, <laughs> the, pas the Passion Bible because the nuances are important to me. You know, but it brought out something to me, and I want to share that with you on this morning. And it's not just that one, the Living Bible. I have problems with portions of that. You know, I love the Amplified. I love the Amplified because it breaks it down for you, and it makes it easy. The English is easy. English is on a high school level, at least, for Amplified Bible. And this is for people that read at home. So a lot of times, if you see something in your Bible, it may be, you may think you have the concept down, but that Bible may not be giving you the nuance. Somebody say nuance. Nuance is the small thing, the little small things. And the little foxes is the one that destroyed the vine. Little, little things are important. Sometimes we don't think little things are important. But what has God told you to believe him for? What has he told you to believe him for? And in the book of Romans, what is happening here is uh, the writer is uh, talking about, he talks about Abraham. And he talks about, uh, in the first few verses, he talks about how uh, God told Abraham to circumcise himself. I'm, I'm setting you up till we get to our verse. He told Abraham to circumcise himself, right? But um, he made a promise to Abraham even before Abraham circumcised. The circumcision was the outward uh, showing of, uh, of the outward seal of what God was going to do for Abraham. But even before Abraham circumcised himself and circumcised his whole household, now Abraham is a grown man at this time, and his son is a large human being at this time too. Every, all the men is, is, is men. So when you get circumcised, I had a friend that got circumcised. He was 16 when he got circumcised. He was in the bed for a week. And I was laughing at him. 
He said, he said, my mama said I got to be circumcised. I'm like, what is that? And he said, that's where they cut the foreskin off. I said, I didn't know, even know you had nothing down there. You know? And so uh, he, he got circumcised, and I had to go. I went and visited him every day. I said, you all right? Man, you sure you all right? He said, today is a rough day. So Abraham, or Abraham at this time, had his whole household. So everybody was shut down for however long this was, but Abraham believed God. And whatever God told him to do, that's what he did. So this, these verses talk about how uh, even before Abraham, Abraham be, got circumcised, God began to bless him as if he had already done what God wanted him to do. You see, you, you, you see, he, 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 he did Abraham like he do us. God sees the finished product. Y'all understand what I'm saying? God sees you in the finished product. So the whole time, and you could, you'll be messing up the whole time doing this. God tell you to go left, you go right. He tell you to stop doing this, you, you, you six months away and you're still doing whatever it is. You, but God don't stop blessing you and doing things for you because he sees the product. He sees where he is taking you. See, you are going somewhere. You are on a journey. Your journey is not my journey. See, we got different journeys, and we can look at somebody from the outside, man look at the outer print, we can look at them from the outside and say, they're not going nowhere, they keep doing the same thing. I don't know what the problem is. I don't know why you keep messing up, and I don't know why you keep doing this, and I don't know why you keep gambling all your money away. When the Lord told you stay away from them slot machines. I don't know, and I'm not uh, against slot machines. and I ain't against lotto, because if you win, bring the money to the church. We'll wash it real good. If you win that million dollars, you win that billion dollars you bring here, I'm going to wash it real good. And then we're going to use it, out of Kenny, after you get through washing it. I don't care if that's on Facebook. I don't care where it is. <laughs> if you on Facebook... And you win some money, cash out me. For sure. We, we will receive it. Uh -huh. and then we're going to report it and say we received it and do all the pertinent things and the things we're supposed to do with it. But we surely, we're going to build the kingdom up, Elder Eddie. 100%. That whatever, how you got, that's between you and God. I ain't got nothing to do with that. So you have to take that up with him. So he continued to bless Abram all along the way. And people can say, oh, well, God shouldn't have blessed Abram, Abraham because he lied a couple times and he did this and he did that. And I'm finna show y'all something in a minute. He did a bunch of stuff that he wasn't supposed to do. And I thought Elder Delisha was going to preach my message. She got up talking about Abraham. I said, oh, Lord. I said, if she get up there, if she do it, I'm going to just let her go ahead. But he did a lot of things, Victoria, that he wasn't supposed to do. He did a lot of things that people from the outside would have said, no, he ain't right. He ain't right. He ain't doing right. He don't deserve this and he don't deserve that. He don't deserve for Jesus to come down through his lineage. He don't deserve to have all these cattle and land and all of this stuff. And God said, I don't care what you say. This my man and I'm going to bless him. Because he trusts me. So here, this is how we get to our verse. Of something I've never seen in this verse before. But I want to share it with you. 14, uh, four, verse 4, four, I mean chapter 4. Chapter 4 and verse 17. And this is what it says. It says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed. Even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Okay. Just hold that. All right. Now, I'm going to do something to help me. Just help me. I'm going to read it out of the Passion Bible. Because it's in, it's in the King James, y'all, but I never noticed this. Somebody going to catch this. Watch this here. Here it is. It says, 
that what the scripture means when it says, I have made you the father of many nations. He is our example and father. For in God's presence, he believed that God can raise the dead. Did you, nobody caught that. It said, in God's presence. <laughs> in God's presence, he believed. If you read it in the King James, it says uh, like in before when he was before God or when him and God was talking. Right. Least, as long as him and God was talking, everything was all right. Yeah. Yeah. Long as you hear in church and God is speaking to you and you can hear the Lord real clear and everything is going good, everything is all right, and you haven't hit the problem outside of this door, you believe I believe God. Abraham believed God as long as he was in the presence of God, but then he got outside the presence of God where his wife was and his servants was, where the problem was, where all the situations was, and things began. Now, he might have believed right after he left, but they began to wear him down. And if you don't believe it, just look at Ishmael. He got there some kind, some kind of way Ishmael got here. See, but it says in God's presence, he believed God while he was standing there. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. I, I, I saw that and I said, I had, I had to show y'all that. And then it says, uh, I'm going back to the, to the King James. It says here, as it's written, I have made thee a father of many nations before whom, before him whom he believed. So while he was before God, he believed. Even God who quickened the dead and called those things that is not as though they were. So God has a, pro a process. God has a way of doing things. Even though we don't see things. Even though, though we don't see what's going on. Even though we don't um, see which way we're going. Even though we don't see what's happening. God knows what's happening and he is doing something. Somebody say he's doing something. God is doing something. God is perfecting us. Even every step along the way, God is moving and he's perfecting us and he's doing things for us. So it says here, he, he who, uh, who quickened the dead and called those things as not as though they were. I want to go to Hebrews 11 chapter and the third verse. Hebrews 11 chapter and the third verse. Give me that. Because some of y'all believe in, y'all, God wants you to believe him, believe what he's saying, believe what he told you about your health, believe what he told you about your finance, believe what you, he told you about the house, believe what he told you about the car, believe what he told you about your ministry and that he was going to anoint you, believe what I said I was going to do. See, and I, I'll say it again, as long as we in front of God and the spirit is moving and the spirit is high, you know, we running up and down the aisles, we believe God then. But see, we got to leave here. You got to go outside of this place. You got to see your relatives and, you know, talk to your kids. And when your kids get to cutting up and all that, all of those things that are going up and people got to call you and tell you that they, uh, they need you to help them with their light bill and all these different a myriad of things that you got to deal with, you got to believe God then. You got to be able to hold on to God then. See, Abraham, at, that, at a certain point, God kept building him up. He would let one thing happen, Abraham lied. He let something else happen, Abraham lied. Then, if you notice, Abraham kept getting closer to God and closer to God, and then God built him up to, at the, at the final point, he said, sacrifice your son. See, you can't go from 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 a from from uh, that point to where you say sacrifice your son if you don't believe God. At that point, you got to have the faith. Right, right. See, when the rubber meets the road, you really got to have faith. So God know how to perfect you, and God know how to do the work on you and to slice the things off of you that need to be sliced off. And He allowed trouble to come. Some of us, he allowed trouble to come. Some of us, he allowed sickness to come and deal with us, deal with our minds. 
so that he could perfect us and make us into what he would have us to be, Elder Kenny. Some of us, if trouble didn't come, we never would have got saved. You never would have got, you never would have come to God. You'd have kept on going down that road, doing what you was doing. But it was a blessing for you that trouble came. It was a blessing for you that things, it was a blessing for you that the person left, that the person divorced you, that the person walked out. The thing that you loved so much went away. It was a blessing when they came and took the car. It was a blessing when they came and took the house. And you say, oh no, that wasn't a blessing. It sure didn't feel like it. That didn't feel good. That didn't feel good when the person, that divorce that I went through, you just don't know, Pastor, I almost lost my mind. And uh, yeah, that person walked out on me. I thought I was okay, but I wasn't okay because now every time I see them, I want to bust their windows out. You know, there's a word for God. I think it's Kanai. 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 Yeah, and it means that God is jealous. You know, some of us with these jealous people. And we don't know what people are going to do if you leave. You don't know what they're going to do. You don't know. You can say, you can suppose, say, oh, well, if I leave, that'll just be it. And, you know, I go my way and you go your way. Sometimes it don't work like that. What if that person don't want to go away? Then what? <laughs> then, what then what you do? Then what you do when they don't go, when they go and bust your, all your mama's windows out? Because they can't find you and say, okay, well, we're going to bust, bust your mama's windows out. Or we're going to bust the windows in your mama's car. And then your mama calling you on the phone talking about what, what's going on? You done did something. Something is happening. You done did something because somebody done come over here and put flats on all my tires. And you know I got to go to work. I don't know who that's for, but Hebrews 11 and 3. Hebrews 11 and 3. At least if you got that, read that out of, the, out of the King James, just that one verse. Yeah, verse 3. By the word of God, uh -huh. so that things which were seen were not made of things which do appear. So the things that you see right now, these pews in this church, and I told y'all this before, the fan and all of these things that you're looking at came uh, into being because somebody spoke first. Somebody spoke. Somebody said something. Somebody had a concept in their mind. And said, "This is this is where we're going, or this this is the the route we're going." And what actually what you see wasn't actually what they saw, because they probably saw something else. But this is what God wanted here. Okay, y'all missed that. A lot of times when God come into our life, He take us somewhere, and we don't know which way we're going. You know, we get saved, and then God say, "Okay." This is what I want you to do. I want you, some of y'all is in this church right now. But because you're here don't mean that you're going to always be here. You may be, you may be like the disciples. The disciples in the book of Acts, for all y'all Bible scholars, the, the, the disciples in the book of and the disciples and the apostles in the book of Acts, the believers in the book of Acts, they were in Jerusalem. If one of y'all scholars correct me if I'm wrong, they was in Jerusalem. They was having a good time. The Holy Ghost had fell. They was enjoying each other, enjoying everything that was going on, y'all. It was great. Yeah. Things were fantastic. They was enjoying the spirit. Along comes Paul and start killing people. And they say, we got to get out of here. If we don't get out of here, Paul and all his cronies, they're going to come and kill everybody. That's why they didn't like Paul, because he had killed a lot of people. So what happened is he came to the first Christians, he started killing them people, and they dispersed. And that's what got the word out. They didn't leave because they wanted to leave. They didn't go because, you know, um, things was terrible and they thought they could go somewhere else. No, they left because things got bad. Just like you. 
badness, trouble, and things come upon us and make us move, make us move. God be wanting us to move, and we'll keep sitting there because we done got comfortable. And God said, I told you to move. Okay, I told you to move. Then he allowed trouble to come, and trouble come and make you move. Well, you ain't got no choice. Pushed you in a corner to where you say, oh, man, this is bad. This is bad. They saying they don't know what's wrong with me. This is bad. God said, "I'm because I'm, I'm moving you. I'm perfecting you. I'm trying to do something in your life. He allowed your finances to get bad. He allowed stuff to dry up on you for you to move. Somebody say move. move. So everything that you see, Every concept was a concept in somebody's mind. Everything, it was made from, from uh, the words that came out of somebody's mouth. God had complete faith in the words that was coming out of his mouth. When you speak things, you got to have faith in what you're saying. That's why you got to be careful what you say. When you're talking to your kids, oh, you ain't nothing. You ain't going to be nothing. You just like your daddy. You this and that and you know. No, you tell that kid, you can do anything you want to do. Yeah. What you want to do, little Johnny? You want to be an astronaut? Well, yeah, go ahead and fly on. You can do it. It don't matter if he make it to be an astronaut. You don't know what he going to be. But he may uh, start studying something that take him down that road. And you know, he'll be sitting up talking about what my mama said I was going to be an astronaut. I'm a little crazy, but, you know, mama said a lot of things. But a lot of times, God take us places. We don't know where we're going. We don't know who's going to help us when we get there. But you got to move. You got to move out. What is God telling you to believe him for on today? Whatever it is, you got to believe him. He did it for you before, he'll do it again. He haven't stopped being God. He's still sitting on the throne. He haven't gone anywhere. He's still moving. He's still changing things. He's still making a way out of no way. He's still bringing people out of ditches. He's still getting people out of bad places. He's still doing what he's been doing all the time. He is still God. He is still sovereign. He hasn't gave up his power. He hasn't gave up the throne. He is still God. He's still speaking. Things are still coming into existence. He just wants you to believe him. See, and once you get to the place that you believe him, if you can just believe God, if you could just have faith in him, if you could just trust him, your home will be better. If you could just trust him, your job will be better. If you could just trust him, you could get the promotion. If you could just trust him, you can do what he's telling you to do. It may not seem like it. You may be saying, I don't have the skills and I can't do that and I don't know how I'm going to make it. And God is saying, I'll show you how to do it I'll show you which way to go I'll give you the understanding if I gotta send somebody by plane, train, or helicopter I'll do it because I'm God all by myself I'm able to do whatever you need me to do if you need me to heal your body I'll heal your body if you need me to save your soul I'll save your soul if you need me to make a way out of no way I'm a way maker if you need me to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room enough to receive I'm ready to do it I'm more than able I'm more than able I'm more than worthy I'm more somebody say more somebody say more somebody say more Lord you're more than that Lord you're better than that the way I'm giving you praise is not good enough because you've been better to me than that you've been gooder than that that ain't even a word but oh God you've been gooder than that you've been better than that oh yes you have yes you have yes you have when I was sick you took care of me they gave up on me said I wasn't gonna make it said I was about to die but God you saved me you saved me you brought me up off my bed of affliction and I want to tell you thank you thank you for your love 
thank you for your mercy. Thank you for helping me trust you. You was there for me when I couldn't trust nobody else. When everybody else turned their back on me. When everybody else turned their phones off. Oh God, you made a way for me. And I want to tell you thank you. I want to tell you thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for helping me to get up. Thank you, God, for helping me. Oh, God, you said when my mother and father, they forsake me, Lord, you said, you said you would take me up when I didn't have nobody and everybody else was gone. You stood right by me. You held my hand with tears in my eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With tears in my eyes. You told me to keep on going. You told me not to give up. The song says, I don't feel no waste time. I come too far from where I started from. Nobody, nobody, nobody told me that this road was going to be easy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But I thank God. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. How many know God won't leave you? Not that he forsake you. You got to believe God this morning. We thank you if you're listening by Facebook. We hope we said something on today. That will help you, that will bless you. You got to believe God, Facebook. And I want to remind you to have faith in God. Y'all give God a hand clap. Hello, family. We would like to thank you for your continued charitable support. If you would like to sow into the March of Faith Community Church, please note the following ways to give. One, mail contributions to P.O. Box 999, Carbondale, Illinois, 62903. Two, cash app to Midwest SG. Three, Venmo to Midwest SG. Thank you again, and may God bless you.